In this video in our Crash Course Trigonometry series, I'm going to talk about the graphs of the six trigonometric functions. So we want to know what the graphs of these functions look like, and we're going to start with the function sine of t. Now notice here that I'm using the variable t rather than f of x equals the sine of x. We will start talking about the functions using the variable x eventually, but for right now I'm going to be using the unit circle approach for these trig functions, which means I'm going to be talking about x and y coordinates on the unit circle, and I don't want to have the x get confused there. So in this case, t here is an angle. And so I'm taking the sine of that angle. And so t, I could also use theta, uh, but let's just use t to avoid Greek letters for the moment. Uh, and But that's why we're using that letter instead of x. Okay, so let's start with a sine function. And we're just going to go one trip around our unit circle. So th this is the t axis here that's going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And we know that on the unit circle, the sine value is the y coordinate, right? Our definition when we have a point a comma b on the unit circle is that the sine of our angle is the b, it's the y coordinate. So our f axis, our f of t axis, is going to go from negative 1 to 1 because on the unit circle, the y coordinate can never go beyond negative 1 to 1. We're stuck on the unit circle, so the y coordinate, the, the lowest it could possibly be is negative 1 the highest it could possibly be is positive 1. So at this point 1 comma 0, where my angle is 0 radians, the y coordinate of that point is 0, so I'm plotting the point 0 comma 0. When the angle is 0, the sine of that angle is 0. Now let's move on to pi over 6. I'm going to stop here at our special angles. Again, all of the angles other than our special angles are, are, are fine angles as well. But the nice thing about our special angles is that we know the sines and cosines of those special angles because we talked about those. So at pi over 6, remember that's 30 degrees, a 30 degree rotation gets me to the point square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. I know that because the cosine of pi over 6, the cosine of 30 degrees, is radical 3 over 2. And I know that the sine of pi over 6, the sine of 30 degrees, is 1 half. So here on my graph, I'm plotting the point pi over 6, comma, 1 half. My t value is pi over 6, my angle is pi over 6, and my sine value is 1 half. Moving on to pi over 4, 45 degrees. Again, I know the sine and cosine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. And so I plot the point pi over 4, comma, radical 2 over 2. Continuing rotating around my circle, I get to 60 degrees, my next special angle, and I know that the sine of 60 degrees is radical 3 over 2. So on my graph, I'm going to plot the point pi over 3, comma, radical 3 over 2. Again, it's important here to understand the difference between these coordinates, 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Those are the x and y coordinates of the point on my unit circle, as opposed to this pair of coordinates which is my t comma sine of t value on my graph of the sine function. So this is why we're using the letter t rather than the letter x, as I said before. Moving on to 90 degrees, so now we get to the top of the circle at the point 0 comma 1, and again the y value there is 1, and so here I'm plotting the point pi over 2 comma 1 because the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we can continue on stopping at each of our special angles. I'm going to start fast forwarding a little bit. As we rotate around to pi radians, 180 degrees, we go back through those same special angles. Our y coordinate decreases from 1 down to 0. So the y coordinate goes from 1 to 0. So my sine value goes from 1 to 0. As I continue to rotate around to 270 degrees, 3 pi over 2, on my unit circle, my y-coordinate goes from 0 down to negative 1. At this point, negative 1 comma 0, my y-value was 0. At this point, 0 comma negative 1, my y-value was negative 1. So on my sine graph, my sine value goes from 0 to negative 1. And then finally, as I rotate back around to 360 degrees, 2 pi radians, my y value goes from negative 1 back up to 0. And so on my function graph, my sine value goes from negative 1 up to 0. So this is the graph of, y equals, uh, uh, of f of t equals sine, the sine of t.
So it's this sort of wavy, uh, what we will come to recognize as a sinusoidal graph or a periodic graph, all of the properties that we talked about before. So the full graph here, again, we only specifically went through 0 to 2 pi, but if I continue, uh, this graph shows negative 4 pi to 4 pi, but again, it doesn't stop there. We know that this graph is periodic, so the function continues in both directions forever and ever and ever. So periodic repeats forever to the right, and again, it also repeats forever to the left. If we look at the cosine of t, we're going to see the same kind of behavior. Now we're looking at the x-coordinate of the point on our unit circle. So here we go from 1, 0 to 0, 1. So x goes from 1 to 0. So my function value goes from 1 to 0. As I continue from pi over 2 to pi, x goes from 0 to negative 1. So my function value goes from 0 to negative 1, and so on. As I go to 270 degrees, my x goes back up from negative 1 to 0, and then my function value goes from 0 up to 1, negative 1 to 0, 0 to 1. And again, just like the sine function, the cosine function is periodic, which means this behavior repeats forever. And again, it's a very similar looking graph to the sine graph. It's just shifted over by pi over 2 radians. If we look at the tangent graph, this one gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go back through, again, stopping at our special angles. So remember that the tangent on the unit circle is b over a. So in general, the tangent of t is going to be the y-coordinate of a point on my unit circle divided by the x-coordinate. So at the point 1, 0, that's 0 divided by 1, which is 0. So on my tangent graph, when my angle is 0, my tangent value is also 0. Now when we move to pi over 6, 30 degrees, we're at the point radical 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Again, the tangent of pi over 6 is going to be b over a, so that'll be 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, also known as 1 over radical 3, or if we rationalize our denominator, square root of 3 over 3. So on my tangent graph, I plot the point pi over 6, comma square root of 3 over 3, and now we're going to move on to our next special angle. At pi over 4, we're at the point square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2 on my unit circle. The tangent of 45 degrees, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So we plot the point pi over 4, comma 1. At 60 degrees, we're at the point 1 half, comma square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of 60 degrees, the tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. But now something interesting is going to happen as we get closer to 90 degrees. At pi over 2, at 90 degrees, we're at the point 1, comma 0. And as we know, the tangent of pi over 2 really wants to be b over a. It really wants to be 1 divided by 0, but that's undefined. So we can't plug in pi over 2 to the tangent function. But what happens as we get closer and closer to pi over 2? What if we plug in 89 degrees, 89.9 degrees, and so on? So if we put, find a point that's a little bit less than pi over 2, again, I'm imagining this is 89 degrees, well, then we're at a point that is something that's very close to 0, comma, something that's very close to 1. And so the tangent would be something that's close to 1 divided by something that's close to 0. And when we divide by a number that's close to 0, what happens is we get an answer that's very big. And so what we're seeing in the tangent graph is that the y value is going up and up and up and up and up and up forever. And what we get is what we call a vertical asymptote. So this dashed line that I've drawn here is not actually part of the tangent graph, but it's indicating that the value of the tangent function is going up forever. So the tangent function is not defined at pi over 2, but as we approach pi over 2 from below, the y value goes up forever. Now as we continue past 90 degrees, so if we were to look at, let's say, 91 degrees, then this point is also something that's close to 0 but negative, because we're on the other side of the y-axis, comma, something that's close to 1. And so again, my y-value is going to be very large, but it's going to be a very large negative number, which means my y-value, if I go closer and closer to pi over 2 from above pi over 2, 
again, 91 degrees, 90.1 degrees, 90.01 degrees, and so on, my y value is going to go down and down and down forever. So again, we have this vertical asymptote behavior. But on one side, my tangent value is increasing forever. And on the other side, the tangent value is decreasing forever. And as we go back through those special angles, we're seeing that our, our tangent value is going back towards a zero. Here at pi radians, my tangent of pi is going to be b over a, zero divided by negative one, which is zero. Continuing to 3 pi over 2, again, we're going to get an asymptote because, again, at 3 pi over 2, the tangent value would require us to divide by 0. We can't divide by 0, and so the tangent value is undefined. So we get another asymptote. And continuing all the way around to 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians, again, we get the behavior where on one side, our tangent value goes up forever, and on the other side, the tangent value goes down forever. So the tangent function is a little bit more complicated because it has these vertical asymptotes. As we've said before, every odd multiple of pi over 2, so this is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on, on the graph, we're going to get these vertical asymptotes because those are places where my tangent function is undefined. And as we've talked about before, at those points, the tangent value either increases forever or decreases forever. We can do similar analysis for the cotangent function. Again, the cotangent function is going to have asymptotes because there will be places where the cotangent function will require us to divide by 0. Those are at the integer multiples of pi. So pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on give us asymptotes as before. Secant, again, very similar. Remember, secant is 1 divided by cosine. So every time cosine is equal to 0, the secant value will be undefined and we'll have an asymptote. And similarly, cosecant will have asymptotes at every integer multiple of pi. So we've talked about the six trigonometric functions. We focused really on sine and tangent. Cosine is very similar to sine, and then cotangent, secant, and cotangent are very similar to tangent in that we get those asymptotes. Next time, we're going to talk about inverse trigonometric functions, and eventually we'll talk about how to use those inverse trigonometric functions to solve equations involving trigonometric functions.